So I have, I have a, um, well, we've already had a conversation before we even got on air and we, we just are having a, a really lovely love fest. Um, I have an author here who's also a, a, a TV journalist and a executive coach. And I mean, I don't know, I'm so curious what you haven't done, but I wanna welcome brand new author, Kate Ekman, and her book is called The Full Spirit Workout. Kate, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here and, and connect with you and your audience. I'm excited to hear what how this conversation goes. Because, and I, so this is what I was going to say to you before we, we started recording. I When I got your book, I'm like, it sat on my desk for a little while because the full spirit workout, I was like, oh my God, if she's going to make me do burpees and... and <laughs> squats. I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. But then looking through it, I love how you built it uh, to be accessible to people that, uh, that do the outer world thing, you know, go to the gym and know. And, and so you've, your chapters are really wonderfully uh, <laughs> structured, stretch your comfort zone. I love that. Just like a workout lift yourself up. I'm thinking of doing planks and then feel the burn and strengthen your core confidence. And as I was looking at reviewing that, I was like, oh, this is curious. One of them that caught me was uh, boost your mental metabolism. So this book, Kate, that you wrote is really a, it really is a spiritual workout. It's not meaning you build your spiritual connection, right? And your spiritual muscle, so to speak. Yeah, this is really about training our attitudinal muscles. So just like we have to go to the gym to work out and, and strengthen our physical muscles to help us navigate the external world and fight against gravity because that's, that's pushing our muscles down. We want to keep them up so we can be fit and strong. We have to really combat emotional gravity, like stress, fear, anxiety, I comparison, love judgment, anything that weighs us down. And there is so much of emphasis on the physical and on the externals, but really little attention is paid to our inner fitness and really getting fit and strong and confident on the inside. So we build this resiliency and this confidence that can weather any storm, because let's face it, the insanity and chaos and uncertainty of the world isn't going anywhere. Right. And it's, uh, so one, I just want to quote, it's toward the back of your book. Uh, cause it caught me life keeps teaching us until we get it. <laughs> Despair is when we think tomorrow is going to be like today. And boy, did you nail that for me so after this last year? And, and you say, you go on to say, that's a lie. Life is always in motion. Choose to co-create and work out with the ultimate personal trainer, the universe. That is just true. All, every single word including the, the, and the, and is true <laughs> because it yeah. does, life does come and get you if you're not paying attention. Yeah. And I think life is always in motion and you can be having a really, not just a challenging day, but even just a challenging moment and remembering that you don't have to stay stuck there. There are tools to get you out of that place, but also don't skip over that. This, this notion that we're too precious or too perfect or too pretty or too whatever to not experience something other than joy and feelings of well being is just not accurate. It's part of the human experience. This is often a place, a springboard for growth and transformation. And so really honoring where you are, but also commit to and be willing to get unstuck and, and to stretch. But also we don't have to go this alone. And, and whether you believe in God or spirit or universe, I think everyone, I have friends that don't believe in God, but they believe in nature and that divine wisdom that turns an acorn into an oak tree and a place where the sun is not in competition with the moon and the stars. Everyone shines bright in their own glory. And so knowing that there is this force, you know, working behind the scenes, whether you believe in it or not, I choose to believe and, and co-creating with that. If something isn't working, you can delete it. Like the, the file on the computer that's corrupting your system, delete those thoughts and co-create a new thought pattern or system that really is going to work for you. So I, you know, you know, I believe in all this stuff. I do it. I practice it. And when I, when I'm not getting it right or not even get, cause you can't get it wrong. But, you know, life does come up and say, hello, 
you need to sit down, you need to take time to do your spiritual practice and journal and all that. So let me ask you this, how did you get here? I mean, was there a life event that you tripped over, so to speak, that caused you to go, okay, I need to sit down and start doing this spiritual inner work. Yeah, I, I had I had played with spirituality, not in a full time basis, and always believed in a in a higher power. And I think for me, it took not one but two massive wake up calls to really transform the way I was choosing to look at myself and live my life. And I lost two dear friends to suicide in one year, and mm-hmm. it was not only dealing with the pain and grief of losing them so sudden suddenly and shockingly and tragically, but I really had to look at the way I was choosing to live my life, who, like most people, was placing all of my worth in the externals. I thought what I looked like, how much money I made, my car, my house, all the shiny objects defined me. And I realized not only is that not true, but basing our self-worth on those terms means we can never have enough or be enough. And that's why you see people with everything still being in a place of, of lack and, and not feeling fulfilled and, and being unhappy. It really is an inside job. I think a lot of people pay lip service to that, but then don't really do the work to implement it. And, and, you know, it's, it's a reason why so many people have a hard time, you know, being in shape because we all know we have to work out and we have to eat healthy, but we have to do that consistently. And it's, it, it is practice because it's easier to sit on the couch and it's easier to eat junk food. Um, it's certainly cheaper. So I, this is a commitment to your overall, all well being. but the results are so worth it that it, it makes it worth your while. Well, and having it be, uh, using the word workout again, I was a little resistant to that Kate, I gotta say, yes. but, um, but that underscores for me that it is, in order to be connected to source within often all the time, being more aware and more calm and peaceful in your life, you have to commit to doing that on a daily basis and committing to yourself, committing, seeing yourself as worthy of it, as valuable. Yeah. And and lots of people do that right now. I think a lot of us are guilty of falling asleep to the truth of who we are. And I've seen the effects of that because suicide is a huge epidemic. And really all that takes is a moment of forgetting who you are, falling asleep to that truth and ending a life, a beautiful life. And so for me, it, it, it is life or death matter. I take this very seriously and, and not just for people to keep everybody alive. I mean, I am a suicide prevention awareness activist and take mental health concerns very seriously. And I think there's this notion too, like, well, I don't have mental illness. I'm fine. But everyone struggles with mental health, especially after this past year. I think now no one can say they're immune to it. I don't know one person or or they're lying. And quite frankly, if you haven't experienced depression or an anxiety on some level, especially during COVID-19, then I worry about you quite frankly. So I, I think the sooner that we can just be real with ourselves and really get to the core of who we are and uncover and discover what we really want, not what we want. What we want is what society says we should want, what mom and dad say, what the friends do and what the neighbor has. This is what you really want and, and, and spending more time there and really starting to cultivate our inner strengths and gifts and, and characteristics and, and using them rather than dwelling of the space of I'm not good enough. I can't do it. I'm not as talented as Sally on Instagram or Johnny at work and, and really reclaiming that we are powerful. And quite frankly, you are capable of doing anything you decide is important enough. And I'm the proof of that. And I'm no, no special or different from you. I just decided to answer the call, this divine life assignment, in this case, writing this book, sharing this message and, and being disciplined enough to put in the work, not because it was easy or convenient, just because I answered the call. I, I wanted to do something greater than myself. Yeah. And that's being of service being of service to yourself because you're listening to that that call um and some people call it a still small voice or a whisper but boy when you're called it's like a kabam and you got and and you have a choice do i listen which is kind of crazy not to or do you and you activate it just by saying yes i'll do this yes spirit i will do this give me more and i will do that so um, so, Kate, let's go back to 
the the different okay i don't know why i'm stuck on this metabolism thing <laughs> I, it might be because I, I i'm trying to activate my body metabolism but let's talk about that for a minute Yeah. So just everything we eat and drink, we all know that we convert that into energy and and that boosts or slows down our physical metabolism. And same with our thoughts. If we have constant negative thoughts and negative self-talk, we're going to have really crappy energy. It's like eating a spoonful of sugar and expecting to have stamina throughout the day. We all know that you crash and that you don't, and that you'll get quite sick if all you're eating is sugar. So we don't realize we're doing that to our mental metabolism when it is all the negative self-talk. And we're holding on to that lie, that limiting belief that we often heard in childhood from a parent, a stranger. In my case, I, I spoke about the swim instructor when I was four years old who communicated to my mom that he didn't think I was a very good swimmer. And how sad that this little sweet, innocent four-year-old, which was me, translated that into a mentality that said, oh gosh, I have to perform at a really high level so that my mom and dad love me and are proud of me and I can feel safe in the world and I can impress strangers at the swim club of all places. And so on one hand, it made me a very hardworking, dedicated, disciplined swimmer. I broke every record at that swim club, but at what cost? I was often filled with turmoil, anxiety and, and insecurities. And so what we have to do is even think about where this limiting belief that's, that's like sugar, that's dragging us down. That's draining our energy comes from clean that up and then co-create, like we spoke about earlier, a new thought system, a new mantra, a new affirmation for ourselves based in the truth. And, and let's go about our lives and, and collect evidence for why we are powerful, why we are capable, why we are enough or come or or the compliments. You know, we, we oftentimes dismiss all the compliments we're given, but boy, do we hold on to that insult or, or that one, you know, poor review or feedback that we've gotten. Why do we do that? You know? And so I, I, this is a, a conscious, deliberate, intentional choice, but Um, just as you know, when your physical metabolism is boosted, you start feeling better. You have more energy and you're, you're really rolling and in the flow and, and performing at a high level. The same is true of our mental metabolism. Yes, I totally agree. And, and it's the stuff that, you know, people have said this for decades, eons, you know, it's, uh, what is being put into our heads, belief systems and words and, you know, uh, visual stuff when we're a little kid, that then becomes that underlying operating system that we don't even know we've had turned on from the beginning. And, and, um, and it often happens when we are still kind of nonverbal, right? Like, I'm sure you couldn't say to your mom, well, I asked the question, right? Why does he think I'm not that good? Or you, you couldn't, it just went in, right? And like a sponge, because kids are sponges. Because I, I just recently uncovered that about myself, that um, being a, born a natural freckle face redhead, I was really traumatized in before elementary school and, um, and things like that. And so I basically, the path of least resistance, if you will, was to make myself invisible. So, and now as an adult, you know, I, I do all sorts of things and I'm like, why is nobody paying attention to me? Well, I just recently uncovered that, that that little girl didn't want to not, didn't want to stick out like a sore thumb, but it was, I couldn't explain it to anybody until now, you know, and now I'm like, oh, connecting those dots backwards so I can unwind it to be really who I am and always have been, right? And and I think that's true for a lot of people, whatever it's not, doesn't have to be a horrible trauma. It can just be one sentence that goes in and then it becomes, you know, your filter. Yeah. And that's why you have to do that work or do the exercises, even in the book where it's, you just ask yourself, is, is this even true? And, and how do I know for sure? And, um, that's even like Byron Katie, the author has done a lot of work in that space. And I think it's just really, um, when you do spend more time quietly alone, turning the distractions off, not looking for everyone else's opinion or feedback or advice, 
tuning into the, the, the best advice you'll ever get, which is the divine wisdom that's always available to us. We just have to download it like a computer file and, and then bring it the intelligence from our head down into our bodies where it becomes wisdom. We know it for sure. We feel it in our bones. That's the wisdom that we have. Um, we all know how to drive a car. We don't think about it. We don't get in and think, okay, now I have to put my foot on the brake. It's just, it's wisdom in our body because we've done it so many times. And so this is what I'm talking about where this becomes your default setting rather than the thinking of the world that tells you how you don't add up to enough and, and, and all, and all of those beliefs that we've made truth. So you, you do have to, you know, and people are like, well, what do I do right now? This seems overwhelming or all the, I don't have time. And first of all, the people that say you don't have time, I say, you know, well, I don't have time to be angry. I don't have time to be overwhelmed and exhausted and, and stressed out and, and saying unkind things to myself and others because I haven't slept or haven't cared for myself. So I think it, everyone has time. I, I, I invite you to think, is it that you don't have time or you don't have priorities in, in line um, and, and what really matters to you? So this is a perfect time and opportunity, I think, for all of us to spend a little bit more time reflecting inward and I, I offer people the exercise I call my sit and stare time. For me, it's a minimum five minutes a day. I do more like an hour and sometimes break it up, but check in with yourself like you would a small child and ask, how are you doing? What do you need? What can I give to you right now? And if you're feeling extra bold and extra brave, you say, I'm so proud of you. You handled that, that really challenging conversation with grace. You didn't lose your temper. Um, great job not responding to that upsetting email until you were in a place where you weren't triggered, right? So um, try it out, five minutes, sit and stare. And, and I promise you, you will start to crave this and you will start to become the person who is capable of not just attracting, but really maintaining the achievement of your goals. I, I, I totally agree with you. I totally hear you. And taking that time during the day, oftentimes people think, okay, well, if I'm going to meditate, I have to meditate in the morning or at night. But I love that phrase, sit and stare. I, I love that. I do that. I didn't know I had, I didn't know what I could call it. So now I know. Thank you, Kate. Yay. Oh, Yay. good. The sit, the sit and stare. And that even as we're talking, yeah. I'm hearing there's a song that says stop and stare. So even stop and just, just give yourself that pause and adult time out. And again, the people that think, well, must be nice. I've got three kids or whatever. I, I think that there's always, we're always available because uh, someone with three kids said that to me. And I think, I see you on Instagram 24 seven. And I say that with love and no judgment because I've been there too. Cause I, I set the, the alarm, the system on my phone. It, it, it clocks it. And once I've had one hour on social media, it cuts it off. So I just, I, again, I, I think we need to be a little more conscious of how we're spending our time and, and what we really want and what our goals really are and what we're willing to do to achieve them. Because I, I, I'm hearing a lot of excuses and I recognize them because I've had excuses. So let's just, um, this is not to beat ourselves up. This is not about shame and blame or guilt. We need to release that. And I think that's the other thing. Think about how much time we waste sitting in guilt and shame and blame and woe is me. I think once you start being conscious of that, you're like, oh, I'm doing that. And you cut it off right away and then come back to a more productive thought or, or activity. So what do you say to the people that really are, that haven't necessarily, well, even the have, I was going to say, haven't necessarily started a spiritual practice, but even I, I have a couple of ex clients, they know exactly what to do, but then they'll call me and, and run the story. And I'm like, no, you, know what to, please, you know what to do. Don't, don't have me get on board with your story. Cause that's not supporting you. If you're listening to, if you listen to yourself, you'll understand it doesn't support you. But then there's these other people. So this is what I'm asking you, Kate. There, there's the other people that are really scared to see what's inside. Like, what if I really find out that I am a piece of crap? What, I don't wanna even know that, right? So, so what do you say to those people? Well, you're not a piece of crap. And um, I, I think having a little more grace and compassion with yourself and, and spending some time cultivating those characteristics. But I think when you do feel stuck, a, a great thing to do is, um, you know, ask yourself, why is this thing important to me? Whatever it is, whatever your goal is. Let's say your goal is, um, I want to have a better relationship with my spouse. So I would say, why is this important to you? 
why right now? And then when we start to ask ourselves these questions and reflect and, and stop living just on the surface level, I think a lot of times we're living up in our little boat on the surface of the ocean. We need to really move down to the floor of the ocean where all the pretty fish and sea life is and all the pretty plants and, and really start to live our life from that space and really transcend all the noise and chaos. But when you answer that question, why? That's where research even says all the motivation for change happens. I think, especially in the coaching world, so many people it's here's my, what I've got this problem. I want to get right to the, how the solution. And when you do that, you may be experience some temporary success or be able to dial it in, but all the motivation for change happens in the who and the why. So who are you? What strengths can you leverage? And then why is this important to you and why right now? And sometimes because I have a lot of people reach out and say they want to write a book and I say, great, why do you want to write a book? Well, I think I'll make more money and it'll help my business. And they give me some vanity reasons and I appreciate the honesty, but you know, ultimately you may get your goal, but you probably won't appreciate it. Um, it, it probably won't sell a lot of copies because there'll be this disconnect with the why and people will see like, okay, you wrote it for this reason. And what am I as the reader getting out of it? So I, I think once you clean up your why and really dwell in your purpose, a lot of people too are like, what's my purpose? I don't know what my purpose is. I think our purpose is, is to be happy, to be in a place of service, to spread joy wherever we go. You know, I do a lot of interviews and even you, it's like, you got all these job titles. You've been out to all the schools. What's up. But I just look at myself as a joy bringer. That's, that's how I define myself. That's my career is bringing the joy. I, I want people to feel seen, heard and acknowledged in my presence. So that's my why I, I, I want to be, you know, someone said you're a servant for the brokenhearted. And I think, yeah. And even today, you know, we talked about, we're both experiencing, we're a little tired. We've had packed days and it's like, let's just focus on the connection. And I, I'm glad that I've been in a place of exhaustion because when you're exhausted, I I'm able to see you. I'm not judging you. I know what it's like. I'm like, yeah, you're a human having a human moment. And then it's just like, okay, I just get to be human when I'm with Kate. I don't have to pretend or perform. Yeah. Which isn't, wouldn't that be lovely if we all interacted that way? It, it you know, and f whatever we can talk, we can go into the whole way society and culture has uh, created us in some ways, you know, but so I, back to your book, the full spirit workout, Kate, because um, at the back of every um, chapter, you've got some check-in questions. You're, you're encouraging people to journal. I'm big about journaling. Uh, that's what I have. That's what I do daily. And that's what I ask my clients to do. You've got some guided meditations that you've written down in here. But so when you said joy um, <laughs> in the, in the, oh, what chapter is this? Eight. And thank you. Embrace your endorphins. <laughs> and I'm just scroll, going around and I, I saw this uh, affirmation and I'm going to read it. Okay. You could, you probably already have it memorized, but this, I'm going to be doing this one again. Cause I, joy is my big, that used to be my, uh, well, it's my email. I joy dancer. Mm. So uh, this is the affirmation, everybody. You can play this over again and write it down or get Kate's book. <laughs> the joy I seek is in me and I can access it at any time. I know joy is always available to me in the present moment. I co-create with the universe in order to tap into greater possibilities of peace and joy. I share my joy with others to double its potency. That's important. I am open to infinite possibilities of experiencing heaven on earth as much as possible. I use my divine wisdom to point me in the direction of my divine purpose. I mean, Ooh. that's it in a nutshell, Kate. It's totally in a nutshell. I love that. I, thank you. It's so fun to have someone read your words back to you and yeah. just dwell in that space and just, and remember because we do forget because we live in the world and the world can be a very challenging place. And so that's why it is so important to do these. And I, I made it fun. Fun's in the subtitle because think of the gym or an exercise program. If you're not enjoying it, you're not going to go back, but you might, you might, you might even like the results, but this, you're going to start getting the results. Even just reading that it, it brings me to such a, a place of, of peace and, and with joy. Again, I think so many of us, cause that's what our culture teaches us. We've all got to have so much money and have so many things to be worthy of anything. And 
when I did all my research on joy and asked people what brings them joy, not one person brought up anything material. And I love nice material things as much as the next person. I love my silk shirt and my fake gold necklace I'm wearing and my overpriced Apple earbuds. But it doesn't bring me joy. You know, people talked about watching their two-year-old, watching the bees do their job and seeing the awe and wonder in their eyes. And that person who did that, they are a multimillionaire and they didn't talk about it. It just, that is so simple. What they talked about or having their morning coffee with their spouse and the dog, just that 10 minutes of simple pleasure and of connection and that ritual. And this brings me joy. We're, this doesn't cost a penny. We're not making a penny. Connecting meaningfully with somebody is is my biggest joy, even if that that somebody is is myself. And and that's what even all my research said: social connection, time affluence, sleep, exercise, acts of kindness and service, gratitude visits, which I write about in the book, that boosts your well being and your happiness meter. Unfortunately, the car, the house the hot body, the good grades, the money, it, it doesn't actually boost our well-being. Sorry. No, <laughs> but I it, guess, I guess the good news is all the stuff for free that we can access every moment of every day, boost your well-being. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and once you're in that place of, of joy and, or calmness or love, um, you can share it. You, you can't, and like you said, it multiplies the potency. It, it so does. I, uh, you know, I make sure, I make sure that I really say thank you to the people that are waiting on me or like at the supermarket or whatever. Today I'm traveling. Uh, well, by the time this airs, I'll be back, but I'm traveling and I had to get a COVID-19 test. It, and believe it or not, it was my first one. I am very proud of that. I went the whole whatever months year. Uh, and, and I just thank the, the healthcare workers that were doing this. I had been doing this for 15, 16 months. And, you know, and they just, uh, they all like lit up like, wow. I, I said, no, I really, really appreciate that you guys do this. And just, just being in a heart space, heart to heart with someone makes all the difference. And then you, you're not only helping them to feel good about themselves, but then you feel good. Like you said, it multiplies. It, 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 it is, it becomes even more potent. Yeah. And I just think that that's why we're here. Kate is, is for co-connection is for connection, co-connection yeah. for co-creating and co-laborating. That's that yeah. those have been my buzzwords for like 10 years because we're not here by ourselves. We're here with humanity. And, and I just, believe it's important. And when you, when you're, when you've developed and maintain and change out your spiritual practice or workout, um, it, it reminds you of what else, you know, and why you're here and, and that you are here to collaborate and connect and, and co-create not just with spirit, but with other people around you. Yeah, I think appreciation goes a long way. And, you know, even my corporate clients who are doing these billion dollar transactions and, and all of that, <laughs> and they, they, they admit it, they would admit it right here, but everyone needs help with, with their confidence and their communication and appreciation. I have a client who received a six word text message from his boss, who's the CEO. And he says, I look at this text message every day. And the text was like, you knocked it out of the park. Great job. But the fact that that means so much to him, just that, that small, simple expression of appreciation, he wants to do better at work. He shows up better for his teammates. He passes that on to his direct reports again, simple stuff. And you think, why aren't we all doing this all the time and how normal it's become to, to be rude or, or hateful or this judgment or the comparison. And I, you know, I said to someone the other day, I said, 
I think some people would rather die than tell somebody good job. And it is a sickness. And I do not subscribe to that at all. So I think I overcompensate the other way. I mean, I've sent emails to people who have written back to a CEO's assistant who has, and at the end, I'll be, bye, 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 appreciate you. And she said, I've been in business 30 years. I've never had anyone sign a work email. I appreciate you. And that broke my heart. But then I thought, well, I'm glad I at least was able to give that to her. And then think how she's going to go on and treat, right, the, the cashier at the grocery store or the person at the gas station or her child or her spouse. So it does create this ripple effect. And and I, I, the fact that we even have to say these things and, and, and remind ourselves and each other really yeah. says a lot. But it goes back to that. Who do we want to be? And by the way, all those shiny objects that we want, because we think it'll make us feel better. You attract those much more easily and naturally when you are in this place, when you are in appreciation, when you are helping people feel better, when you are bringing the joy, you get this stuff. I mean, the stuff I, I would try to just force or control years ago. Now there people are emailing me, people are calling me. I don't have to try because I've already done the work. So I'm attracting it. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. I've experienced it. So I totally get what you're saying. You know, and it's interesting because some people will feel like they can um, attract only certain things, but the other stuff I, oh, I was never good at that. So forget it. And I'm like, wait, if, if you're able to open up and, and love yourself that goes into every area, you know, like a, a pie chart, right? It goes into your, your relationship chart piece and it goes into the financial piece and it goes into, it, it doesn't just go into one segment of life. It, go, it just goes over all of it. Yeah. 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 And I, you know, so many people struggle with rejection or get so upset when people criticize or overlook them. But, you know, as I talk about in the book, th there's so much self-rejection that's happening. And, you know, you just said, love yourself and people, I, I don't know. I think we all need to, you know, as I say to clients too, when they say, I want to be more successful, I'm like, what does that look or feel like? Cause it's different for everyone. Yes. And I think when people write down their definition and they think, well, I have that and I don't feel successful. So let's redefine that. But I think even this notion of, well, you got to love yourself. I think a lot of people don't even know what that means or their no. self-love is actually self-hatred or self-rejection. And so spending some time there and, you know, self-rejection, for instance, looks like, um, I'm really committed to, um, eating better because I want to feel fit and healthy and live a long life and, and see my children and grandchildren, you know, get married and have families of their own. So I need to be healthy, but then choosing to make really uh, poor food choices. That's self-betrayal, that's self-rejection. And we do it all the time, yeah. but, but we don't even realize it. So, and then once you start doing that, I think the other beautiful thing is you start attracting people who are more loving and supportive, who aren't overlooking or criticizing or rejecting you. That's just how it is. And I think we're in an era, I don't know if you've experienced it, but an era of letting some people fall away with love, with mm -hmm. respect. So we don't keep attracting the same people, but as you do that, um, there will be a grieving process. Sometimes it feels sad. It might be a relative that you've known since birth. It, it might be someone you've known 20 years, but you think I just, this is no longer, you know, working for me. They don't see me. They're, they're not committed to hearing me or, or acknowledging me or understanding or respecting me. And then when you do that, I, I have met so many incredible people through this book. And even today I got emotional on a call with someone who I had known for 20 minutes. And I, I even just told him, I said, I feel more seen by you than some people I've known my whole life. And, um, I think it's because I'm really seeing myself now. And so I'm, I'm really surrounded by people who see me and, and choose to see me. Does that, does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, Kate. And I, and I would also offer that, uh, it, you feel that way because uh, going back to, you know, writing the book and saying, you know, I don't know why I'm writing this. I, I didn't have time, but you said, yes, you stepped up and said yes. And so that's also a way of, of us seeing ourselves, right. By going, okay, if, if I'm being led to do this, then I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And, and that's a, a way that we see ourselves. And that always reflects out. It always 
Yeah. And well, I I knew why I was writing this book. I mean, I dedicate it to Sam and Roth who are no longer with us and and everyone who struggles with mental health, which is every, everybody. Um, So I I did have that strong why that carried me through. I'm just saying that um, it's like being a parent. I mean, quite frankly, who has time to have children? It's, it's not about the time it's you're making the time you're prioritizing it. You feel, you feel that call to be the parent, to start the business, to write the book. And for me, I, I was just so passionate about these these keys and life resource for a better way of living that I just I wanted to share it with everyone. Not like you have to do it, but more of just thought you'd like to know. Um, I I don't even know that I'd be alive if if I if I didn't do these practices and and really commit to this this life and and these types of of exercises. So of course I want to share it with everyone because I I don't want to just do well. I want everyone to do well, and and this stuff works if you do. Yes, it does. And, and what I love also, uh, the last thing I want to say about this, your, your book is um, it, it's not a read it from the co- front cover to the back cover. You can, you can read a chapter or, or a section of that chapter, or you can go like I did earlier. I went to the back of the chapter. I was like, oh, I like that. I'm going to do that. So it's not a, it's not a straight read. Like some people think. And, and in some ways, because it's a, um, a workout, the full spiritual workout. Um, sometimes you have to do the work. There's work in here. She put work in here, everybody. There's specific things you can do to improve your mind, to improve your uh, uh, your mental metabolism, but also uh, to un, uh, unhook those beliefs that you may have been running on. And yeah, you got to you got to do the work. That's part but of it. So, sometimes the work is, as I say, exercising our days off. This is the art of doing absolutely nothing. Sometimes the work for a high achieving type A go-getter like myself, the work is unplugging and shutting it down and not doing anything. And for the people who are experiencing anxiety, just hearing that I say, but you are achieving something. You're achieving inner peace. You're achieving rest and rejuvenation. You're, you're achieving that that deeper connection with yourself. And I love that you said that this book is directional, not linear. You can, you know, skip around even. I'll just pick up, turn the book and I'm like, ooh, or there's certain things I know when I, I am in that place of not fully trusting or surrendering, I will start off with, with step seven and step up your spiritual stamina and, and read that story about surrender and, and being okay if it happens and okay if it doesn't and how that's a powerful place to be. Which it is, is a powerful place. You, you know, a divine download or intuitive hit I got after experiencing another rejection. So it, it is fun. And, and I like too, that you can, you know, return to certain exercises again and again and skip around. And even I had one man said, he said that the affirmations at the end of each chapter alone are, are worth it for me. And really you even read one, just grounding that into the body and living your life from that space. And, and as you do it, and then you'll suddenly just start feeling better and, and see the, that you're, relationships are improving or, or you do feel more confident in that meeting or, or zoom call. And you, you are finally um, achieving these goals. And it's, it is that kind of slow process like physical workouts. We're like, man, I'm not really seeing the results. I don't feel more fit or strong. And then suddenly you just transform into this, this new person who is just more capable. And then you're able to share that with the people around you, just like a, a workout buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exact. I know I need that. I need somebody to go with me, make me show up, do it, do it with me. So the book is called The Full Spirit Workout by Kate Ekman. And uh, Kate's website is Kate Ekman, E-C-K-M-A-N dot TV. And and when they go to your website, what else will they be able to see? Well, I love that all of the book meditations are there. I've recorded them for you. I, awesome. the sound engineer mixed them at a high frequency. So really take you on that journey of self-discovery and listen to them for free. And I have um, a, some free online courses and some other things that you can check out. And, and really it's just a place of connection and collaboration and community rather than competition. And, and really that's what my social media, I like to, I like to focus on what I can give rather than what I can get. And, and I, I invite everyone to join me there and, and come work out with me. No sweating required. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And, and I promise you, you will get 
so many gifts from the book, but even if it's just one thing, I, I think that's enough. And then please share it with friends and family so that you really can be growing together and getting fit together. I love it. I love it. Kate, thank you so much. I, I am personally, I'm very grateful you took the time to write this book and, and to get it out there for people. Cause it's a good, it's, it's very practical and yet it, it's going to take you into the mystical everybody. So Kate, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. You're amazing. And I could, I could look at your beautiful red hair all day. So thank you. Something that you used to hide. I, I'm, I'm loving the freckles and red hair. Don't thank we love how you. that works? So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. So I'm just going to end with, and so it is namaste.